I could only look on as I sat by and watched through a computer monitor when a sudden, terrifying flurry of Hellfire missiles came crashing down, splattering purple-colored crystal guts on the side of the mountain. Since that time and to this day, I continue to recall several such scenes of graphic violence carried out from the cold comfort of a computer chair. Not a day goes by that I don't question the justification for my actions. Those are the words that Daniel Hale wrote in an 11-page letter to the judge who heard his case and is sentencing him today. Hale is the former U.S. Air Force intelligence analyst who shared eight secret and three top secret documents with journalists at The Intercept about the U.S. drone warfare program in Afghanistan, Yemen and Somalia. Hale argued in court that he struggled with the moral issues of his job, which was to identify targets for drone strikes in Afghanistan, specifically with the possibility that some he might identify as enemy combatants could actually be innocent civilians, as well as he struggled with the collateral damage of people in close proximity to those targets who could and were often killed by those drone strikes. Such was the case as the Predator drone strike that Hale directed that missed the target, an alleged member of a car bomb making ring in Afghanistan. But the shrapnel from the missed drone strike killed one of the man's little daughters and severely injured the other who were sitting in the back seat of the car that was being targeted. The man's wife was also in the car. Hale saw her get out of the car after the missed strike through the drone's camera, unable to see what she was trying desperately to remove from the back of the car. It was her children. It was his commanding officer who told Hale that the woman was the suspect's wife and in the back of the car were their two little daughters, aged five and three. Hale said in his letter to the judge that this day was, quote, the most harrowing day of my life, end quote, and the day that changed his perspective on the drone warfare he was conducting for the U.S. military. He said that he never forgot the scenes of graphic violence carried out from the cold comfort of a computer chair and that not a day goes by that he doesn't question the justification for his actions, but the cold and detached view of killing people a world away that Hale said he couldn't abide while actively conducting drone strikes while in the military was reflected also in the conduct of regular people who worked in the uniquely D.C. cottage industry of defense contractors. Hale describes an occasion at the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency where he worked after leaving the military, where he witnessed co-workers watching and laughing at past drone footage as an after work activity. Hale notes that his co-workers gaped and sneered at the footage of faceless men in the final moments of their lives just before they were blown up by drone bombs. This is the moment that probably propelled him to share those documents on the deadly U.S. drone program with journalists. And I don't blame him. I suppose one can rationalize what you do in the military that creates collateral damage to some degree, although even Hale said that he could not. His answer seemed to be to get the heck out of the military. And I I get that. Because at this point, one person is not going to stop the bloodthirsty U.S. war machine. So I understand getting away from participating directly in it. But it's a different kind of thing, I think, when you see civilians, regular Americans, just normal people at work, paper pushers, laughing at the indiscriminate deaths of people a world away, mocking the callous and cold termination of life, making a happy hour drinking game out of watching poor farmers and mothers and children be blown to bits by a bomb directed by a joystick from the cold comfort of a computer chair. 
to Hale's former co-workers the drone-directed deaths of Afghans or Yemenis or Somalis were a source of amusement and entertainment. And that, to me, is no different from the military acceptance of civilian deaths as collateral damage. Truthfully, this is the same attitude toward war and death and misery that the U.S. drops on, quote, others that everyone in the entire chain of the war machine has. Whether it's the politicians funding the bottomless pit of the Defense Department, the general drawing up the nonsensical and aimless combat strategies, the soldiers who've pledged to follow orders that result in needless civilian carnage, or the civilian army of bureaucrats and office workers who provide the administrative support for the U.S.'s bloody march of death. The problem isn't just that the drone warfare program indiscriminately kills thousands of innocent civilians. No, the problem is also that the U.S. deciding that foreign life is worthless in the face of the grand illusion of national security and for the war on terror is an attitude that pervades every aspect of the defense and intelligence apparatus in this country and nearly everyone involved in it. And I can tell you this pretty confidently as someone who worked as a defense contractor myself. The regular folks working these jobs either do not think about who dies in another country because of their work or they simply do not care. And that, I think, is what Hale realized and what horrified him, that by and large, Americans have no soul or conscience. And for that, I think, Daniel Hale deserves to be honored and not thrown in prison. But you and I know what's going to happen to him, unfortunately. Follow Luke Nation on Patreon.com slash Nation for lots of great content.